Mm, I think for me, I've always been interested in, in objects and in, in architecture because there's such a, I think it's such an interesting way where we, we, we make all these houses and we shape all these objects so they fit our bodies. But in a way, then we start using them and then they start sculpting us back. Um, and I think this whole relation and this whole going, going back and forth between like these objects that we make and how they make us or how we then, what well, we have to inhabit them and then engage in other ways. And it's, um, yeah. And I think also the, the, another reason why I've always been interested in objects is I've always been interested in like the anthropomorphic gaze, mm -hmm. looking at objects as if they were human, uh, if they could talk. I think it's something so inherent in us. And, um, and it's something that also has to do with objectifying people in a way. And it's this, for me, it's this double uh, thing where it goes back and forth between watching objects as humans or objects as living things and watching humans as, as objects. And yeah, it's this weird uh, dynamic. Yeah, you know. relation, sort of a relation. Yeah, yeah. So it's a lot about, I mean, a lot of my work is about love and desire. But it's not only like between people, it's also between animate and inanimate and uh, people and animals or these kind of, um, all these kind of different relations. Yeah. Um, right now I'm working on a bigger performance mm -hmm. project, which came a lot from the pandemic actually, I think. Uh, it's not directly about the pandemic, but it's about some of these things that that has really gotten more extreme during the pandemic, like loneliness. So I'm working with this uh, group of dancers and choreographers to develop a new piece uh, about a group of people that are caught in this institution uh, that they can't escape. It's like they're on a holiday that they can't escape. And, and we follow them during one uh, restless night uh, where where we like follow each of their like um, thoughts and, and and they have all these different desires and, and longings and and then they are also going back into childhood actually. Uh, this new piece is a way of of trying to to understand what it does to us this loneliness and this isolation and and what it how this longing that I think a lot of people felt during lockdown is also a human condition. So, yeah. Um, and it's the first time for me also to be working with dancers. So I'm really excited about that uh, because they have another toolbox and another language. I mean, I always come a lot from text, even though I also work a lot with my body, but it's a completely different thing when, when you're when you have this dance background, of course. Mm. That's a good question. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I've always, like, text has always come naturally to me. I'm much of a, like, a thinker and a planner. But I think these last years, I've really been trying to unlock other ways of of uh, making work and working more from my body and working more from uh, something intuitive. I think that's what comes like, maybe that's some of the differences uh, between uh, between working with text, working from text or working from the body that, that the text can, can often um, become this rigid thing. Even though I also work with automatic writing and I try to like get out of these like normal ways of thinking about dramaturgy uh, I think as soon as you start working from the body and working with improv, for example, uh, something happens that can't happen in that like writing space. I've always been curating and writing uh, next to my art practice, and I and I also consider it a part of my practice because it's also a way of of entering into a dialogue with my colleagues and also um, reflecting upon my own work when I look at other people's work. 
And I think some people might say like, oh, when you're an artist reviewing other artists' work, that that's maybe something a bit problematic or that's something because we also like in a competition or we are <laughs> but I think but I think for me it's it's really important when I write these reviews that I'm also really transparent about where I'm coming from and what my interests are. Uh, because I think that's one of like the the really one of the difficult things about reviews is when they become this authority and they are telling you this is good and this is bad. Um, because I mean for, for, for me there's I I think of I think there are two like goals with reviews. Like one goal or one objective could be to tell people to see this show or read this book or don't see this show, don't read this book. And one other objective could be to discuss how should we make art. And I think for me it's it has to have both parts. Uh, for me writing reviews is both about like recommending stuff, but it's also about discussing with my colleagues and with everyone interested in art uh, how I think we should work and um, how we can get better. Yeah. <laughs>